Hi folks, welcome back for more Limit Excitement. As much as we'd like to move on at this point to just find the slopes of those tangents, there's one little thing we need to clean up at some point, so I guess that point might as well be now. That's limits involving infinity and asymptotes. So in rational or fractional functions, x values that satisfy the following two conditions cause vertical asymptotes. They've got to make the denominator zero, and they can't be canceled out through division. If they cancel out through division, then that means that the limit exists at that point, and there's actually just a hole in the graph instead of having an asymptote. So if we look at this first one, clearly the number zero causes the bottom to be zero. The question is, can it be canceled out if we, uh, if we try and divide out this fraction? So the, the bad thing to do would be to say, oh, I'll divide out these x's. That's a cardinal sin of algebra. Okay. You can only divide out factors. So if you want to check, then you should really factor this. And so it factors to 2x and x, and we'd have a plus 1 here and a minus 1 here. In this case, you might automatically just see you won't have a common factor of x to divide out. So what makes the bottom 0? Zero? 0. And it's a vertical line, so it takes the form x equals 0. In the next one, there's no factoring to happen. Um, and these obviously aren't going to divide out. So there is going to be an asymptote in here. We just have to figure out what number makes the bottom 0. Okay, and it was pretty obvious in the last one. In this one, it's relatively obvious too. Um, but if we're ever stuck, we can just make a little equation. I wonder what makes the bottom 0. Oh, 1 makes the bottom 0. So that's the equation of our asymptote. The next one, oh, if I want to find out what makes the bottom zero in a quadratic, I mean, I'm going to have to factor. So let's see. x squared plus 2x minus 3 would factor to x plus 3 and x minus 1. So what you might notice here is that there are two numbers that make the bottom zero, negative 3 and positive 1, but one of them divides out. There's going to be a hole at negative 3. Where there's going to be an asymptote is at x equals 1. So there it makes the bottom 0 and doesn't cancel out. And the last one, we've got another quadratic here. I could say, oh, I wonder what makes the bottom here 0. Let's see, what makes x squared plus 1 equals 0? That mean x squared is negative 1. Well, that's pretty fishy. Or x is plus or minus the square root of negative 1. That's not a real number. So even if you look at the bottom, it's going to be a squared number plus 1 or a positive plus 1. Nothing will make the bottom zero. Therefore, no vertical asymptote. That deals with vertical asymptotes. Let's move on to horizontal asymptotes. Last year, when we had rational functions, we had a bunch of rules for horizontal asymptotes. Um, now we've got sort of calculus definitions for them. We can find horizontal asymptotes by considering the limit as x goes to infinity. That means as x goes as far as it can to the right. And x goes to negative infinity, which is as far as it can to the left. And that's what a horizontal asymptote means. It means where do you tend toward, or what number do you tend toward as you go far to the right or far to the left? In other words, they come from considering large x values. Now, if you're ever stuck for one of these, the numerical hack is to sub in a big x value. And by big, we could mean like 100 bajillion or whatever, but you can probably get a pretty good idea often with just putting in 100 or 1,000. Just intuitively here, if x goes to infinity, then what happens to 1 over x? Well, 1 over x becomes 1 over a big number. And if the denominator is big in a fraction, then that means that the overall result is small. One cake divided between a bajillion people means everybody gets very, very little. Or if I had 1 divided by this, the result is very small. And as this gets infinitely large, then we're going closer and closer to zero. You might say, hold on, but we never really get to zero. 
The limit is about what you're tending towards, not about what you actually reach. And infinity is not a number that you can actually get to. So don't try and use it like other numbers. Um, you can think of it, but to actually sub it in is a problem. So in this one over here, as x goes to negative infinity, we'd be thinking, OK, well, what if I have 1 over negative big or negative a bajillion? There we go. Boom, boom, zero, zero, zero. You're still going closer and closer to zero. Essentially, if you have a bigger power on the bottom than the top, then you're going to head towards zero because you'll be having a bigger denominator than numerator. Okay, that leads us to trying to find some limits. Um, and like I said, it's weird to sub in infinity, but we can think about it. So something like this. We could try and put in infinity. We'd get 5 infinity cubed minus 3 times infinity plus 2. Okay, all over 2 infinity cubed plus infinity squared minus 1. Essentially, we'd get infinity over infinity. Okay, So that's one of the indeterminate forms. That makes us think there might be hope that there actually is a limit. And there's a really, really neat formal trick that we can use here. So someone had the bright idea that you could multiply the bottom and the top by 1 over the highest power of x in the bottom. And that looks like a weird thing to do. Um, but let's just follow it through, because it's legal. Okay, x isn't actually infinity, it's just approaching infinity. So if I have 5x cubed times 1 over x cubed, that'll just give me 5. Now follow along with this method, but I will show you a more efficient way later on. This is, this is a more kind of full service, though. 3x over x cubed, well, that would be 3 over x squared. And 2 over x cubed would be this. There's our top. And then the bottom, let's see what we'd get. We'd get 2x cubed times 1 over x cubed. So that's just 2 plus 2 over x or sorry, not 2 over x, but just 1 over x from this multiplication, okay? because it would be x squared over x cubed. And lastly, minus 1 over x cubed. That looks uglier than what we started with. But here's the thing. As x goes to infinity, 5 becomes 5. It doesn't care about x's at all. This term, as x goes to infinity, that's going to be 3 over big it's going to go towards 0. And this term is also going to go towards 0. On the bottom, as x goes to infinity, 2 becomes 2. 1 over x becomes 0, because it's 1 over big. And 1 over x cubed is also going to go to 0. So we get 5 over 2. That's the y value we approach as x goes to infinity. And the y value that we approach as x goes to infinity, well, that's the definition of a horizontal asymptote. So what we learn is that the horizontal asymptote is 5 over 2, on the right at least, because we looked at the limit as x goes to positive infinity. If we go to negative infinity, we can have the same technique. And we end up with the same result. It's going to be 5 minus 0 plus 0 all over 2 plus 0 minus 0. We still get 5 over 2. So that means we have a horizontal asymptote on the left as well. So because we got a number both for going to positive infinity and negative infinity, we know that we have a horizontal asymptote and that it's the same on the left and right. But that's a lot of work. Um, so I'm going to show you a quick little hack here for getting around this. When we consider limits as x goes to positive or negative infinity, it's really only the highest terms that make a difference on the top and bottom. Like out around infinity, sure, 
three times infinity is also infinity, but th let's take like a, a million. Three times a million compared to five times a million cubed, a million cubed is way bigger than a million. Okay? So out around infinity, it's only the highest power terms that are in charge. It's only this one and this one. I like to call them drivers. And for limits involving infinity, you can take this little hack of just considering the limit of the drivers. So 5x cubed over 2x cubed. Ah, x cubes cancel. Gives us 5 over 2. Same on the left-hand side. The drivers are 5x cubed and 2x cubed. We're still going to get 5 over 2. And this way, because we got numbers here, we know that the asymptote is 5 over 2. Okay, and that's a horizontal asymptote. It's automatically a horizontal asymptote because I wrote y equals. Um, and one other thing you can do to save yourself a little time is when you're looking at rationals involving polynomials, the limit will be the same whether we tend to infinity or negative infinity. That'll change if you have absolute values or exponentials, but for basic ones, that's the case. So if I found this one, I'd be pretty confident in the other. If we get a number, then that's our horizontal asymptote. You write it as y equals. If we don't get a number, then there's no horizontal asymptote. So if you get like infinity or if you get an expression with x's um, that doesn't go towards zero, if we have an exp exponential involved, we'll have to consider infinity and negative infinity separately, but we're not going to do that right now. So after all that preamble, I'm going to find the equations of the horizontal asymptotes on the following. This one over here, drivers of this, let's check it. X goes to, we can say positive and negative infinity here just to save ourselves some time. It's going to be the same either way. Oh my gosh, we get a 2. Therefore, the equation of the horizontal asymptote is 2. Okay, all we care about is the highest powers on top and bottom. We've got to take the whole term with them, though. The next one, we've got a 3x as the highest power on top and a negative x as the highest power on bottom. And so let's see. These x's are going to divide out. We'll get negative 3. And you can take any of these and graph them in Desmos or your GDC, and they're going to end up with uh, these asymptotes. You're going to see it graphically. The next one, we have x over x squared plus 1. So here we have a limit with the drivers. Okay. And you can only do this, again, with positive and negative infinity. For all other numbers, the, all the terms matter. Okay, now check it out here. The x's kind of divide out a bit. And so we'd have 1 over x if I simplify that. As x goes to infinity, that actually does converge on a number. As x goes to infinity, we'd have 1 over huge, or just 0. As x goes to negative infinity, we'd have 1 over negative huge, which would also be 0. So this one has an asymptote of y equals 0. Lastly, horizontal asymptote on this one, driver, driver. And here we get 2x. So as we go to positive infinity, that's going to become infinity. As we go to negative infinity, it's going to become negative infinity. Those are not numbers. Okay, Those are ideas. So if you end up with infinity or negative infinity, there is no horizontal asymptote. This function will just increase without bound or decrease without bound. It's only a horizontal asymptote if you get a regular number. All right, that brings us to the last sort of portion of this rational function work that we'll do around asymptotes. If a function contains both a fractional component and a whole number component, we can still find the horizontal asymptotes by considering the drivers, essentially, and what happens as x goes to infinity and negative infinity. Just consider the fractional piece and the whole number piece as separate components. 
So we're going to find all the asymptotes on the following. Remember, to find the vertical, we just figure out what makes the bottom 0. Okay, so what would make the bottom 0 here? 3. It's a vertical asymptote, so it's x equals. Now to find the horizontal, we can take the drivers in the fraction. That deals with the fraction part and the 4. Okay, so as x tends towards positive and negative infinity, those x's will divide out. You have 2 from the fraction and then 4. And the numbers 2 and 4, as x goes to infinity, don't care about x at all. That limit's going to be 6. So there's our horizontal asymptote. I don't really need to write that it's horizontal because I have y equals. You could pause and try the next one. And we're back. If I'm looking for verticals, I'm wondering what's going to make the bottom 0. I see a quadratic, so I probably want to think of it in factored form. This one will have two vertical asymptotes at x equals negative 1 and x equals positive 1. If I want the horizontal stuff, well, I'll just consider the limits. And if you just want to do this limit stuff in your head, that's fine too. Okay, so drivers, 3x over x, x squared, rather, and then I have a minus 5. So the 3x over x squared deals with the fraction, and the minus 5 is a number on its own. Let's see what happens. As x goes to positive or negative infinity, that's 3 over x minus 5. And as x goes to infinity, 3 over x becomes 3 over very big. 3 over huge is just 0 minus 5. There's the number, negative 5. The equation of the asymptote is going to be y equals negative 5. And there are all our asymptotes. So the techniques are really the same. Uh, you just consider them in separate little chunks. To recap what we've done, vertical asymptotes come from numbers that cause the bottom to be 0 and can't be canceled out. Horizontal asymptotes come from considering the limit as we head towards positive or negative infinity, which you can do informally in your head if you prefer. If you get a number, that's your asymptote. I'd say also here, consider drivers or highest powers on top and bottom. There are um, four questions here that you can find the asymptotes for. You could check on your GDC or Desmos, um, and also there are answers down below here. I hope this has been helpful. Good luck with the material, folks, and take care.